Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Writing Research Papers and Submissions by Emeritus Professor Lance Hall. Uh, this is an online webinar session. This is brought to you by IEEE Malaysia Section, Consultant Network Affinity Group, and Young Professionals. Okay, let me in make an introduction of our distinguished speaker today, Prof. Lance Hall. Uh, Prof. was born in Hong Kong and trained and worked as a marine radio and electronic officer from 1972 until 1978. He graduated with first class honors in his maritime studies. He has master's of engineering degree in system test technology in 1982 and received his PhD in 1944. He also held positions as an academic program chair Associate Dean of Research, Postgraduate Research Director and Director of Center for Enterprise Collaboration in Innovative Systems. And he is also a nominate candidate for IEEE 2021 until 2022, Asia Pacific Region, R10, Director Elect. His motto is uh, law, learning without, with no boundary. So without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Lance to commence his sharing session. Thank you.
Did I not get a response from you? My okay, so can you have you unmailed me already? Have you unmailed me? Okay, so can you see my screen now? Uh, Meaning, my screen is on the PowerPoint. Uh, just make sure that it's on. So, are you able to see the PowerPoint? Okay, then. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I apologize for, for the disruption earlier on. And uh, good afternoon. Uh, to everyone, wherever you are, and uh, I'm really pleased and honored uh, to have the invitation to speak to, to you on this topic on writing research papers and submissions. Well, I must say that, um, well, some of the topic has been quite popular, so I have been presenting this one in a couple of other webinars before. So some of the materials, well, if you have attended some other seminar, you might have seen it before already. But nevertheless, I try to add on some uh, different points because I, I do well, understand that um, the audience may have a different objectives. So that's why I try to aim more in terms of the writing and also the submission aspect. So thank you so much for, for the invitation. And also thank you for the uh, introduction as well. My name is Lance Fang, and I'm from Murdoch University, Western Australia. So I think this opportunity to acknowledge, well, the invitation from uh, Dr. Rafimala Khanan, the uh, Senior Lecturer in IT Management Unit, uh, Multimedia University. And I also thank you, well, Dr. Warren, uh, the chair uh, of the um, executive committee of the IGW Malaysia Section Consultants Network, and also Professor uh, Bohan. And I must also say uh, happy birthday yesterday. And uh, your Johan Laksa looked uh, excellent, well, and also your cake as well. And also thank you, um, Dr. Harun, as a host, and also the members of the executive committees well, of IGW Malaysia Section Consultants Network. I also uh, recognize that uh, this is also sponsored by the young professionals, but unfortunately, I'm not able to get the details of your members. So I just uh, thank you, uh, members of the committee member as well. So first of all, I have to make a disclaimer that even though that I'm wearing, well, uh, some actually your hat, but um, well, the, the, the presentation in here is a lot of material that taken from the IEEE website and also a lot of my personal experience. So they're entirely my personal opinions and not necessarily not necessarily the opinion of IGOE. And I also try to clarify a little bit that uh, I know the title, well, you mentioned about writing the papers, but I know that there are already so many materials, so many courses teaching you how to write the paper. So I'm not really going to that part. I'm already making the assumption that because it is a young professional that you have a majority of you are involved well, in the academic career, or maybe even you are studying, that you would have, you would have known how to write the papers already. But I want to go a little bit behind it. Well, why, why, you, why you want to write a paper and well, what are the plans and strategy you should adopt? And especially, I'm going to share some of my observation going on, especially while well, having around uh, over 30 or so years in, in Australia, and I see the trends of changing. And I can also see that well, what's happening around the, the Asian countries. Also, I can see that they're catching up, they're following some of the trends we're doing. But we are not really the tip top. I mean, in a way that we are also following examples like USA and, and UK. But I know that, well, looking at some of the uh, decision makers, well, what they base on is really go beyond now just writing the paper. So that's why you need to have uh, some kind of strategy in terms of your academic career. So I'm aiming to target the audience. Some of you are the postgraduate student. In particular, I do recognize that some students may be in the process that you're looking for further study. So this is where you're, you're writing the paper, writing the proposal is important. So I add part of it. Again, I shared experience well, from my university, uh, also be a research director and also, and also be a, the, the associate dean of research. So I just share what we're looking for. In particular, you, if you want to apply for scholarships. Some of you, since you're a young professional, uh, we used to call you well, graduates of the uh, last decade. So you might be in the beginning part of your academic career or in your professional career. So writing the papers or writing the proposal may be something you, you, you require a certain skill to, to be able to master. So I'm looking into that aspect as well. Or maybe in general, well, someone who had been uh, around and, and still interested looking in the uh, research and the publications. So I'm going to share a little bit of time on um, introduce myself. And um, well, let go with the fundamental question. Well, why should I write and why should I publish? 
And also, what are the trends going on around the world? And may I suggest some of the plans? Well, I would suggest that、um, if you are at the beginning part of your study and also of your career, you really need to have a much longer term plan well, in terms of writing and submissions. And then, well, I just、uh, share quickly about、well, some of the values well for the publishing your work. Well, really, that part itself is really quite a, well a fair bit of、um, discussion can go on, but I'm not going to detail into some of those、uh, things that consider. Things like citations, well, age、uh, factors, impact factors, and all those things. At this moment of time in here, well,、um, that could be another occasion, or maybe there are also some other well, information on the website as well. I just briefly take a look from IGB point of view, or the conferences and the journals, and also share some of the Australian experience. Because as I said, from the grants and、um, uh, uh, papers by point of view, well, the government actually is changing the the focus. It's not only just simply publishing a paper. Or based on citation, so I'm going to share some of our experience. I'm not so sure to what extent. Well, the Malaysian government is looking at some other factors, so that's what I'm going to share. Well, what we observe right now in Australia, and then coming back to IGBE, then I finish off with another role I have been well、uh, playing in IGBE is in terms of the conference well quality, because well a lot of time well you get experience not only just submitting the conference, but rather you may be running a conference. So this is another thing that you need to. Um, to take care of because、uh, again I talk a little bit because the worst thing can happen to you is well you attend a conference you pay the money you you you、um, publish the paper and then find out that the conference the proceeding is not indexed and there's certain reason for that or vice versa maybe you you run a conference and then you find that well they are not able to subtract、uh, to attract well enough、uh, submission and then、um, well what is the reason behind it because well there are some factors well being Uh, an author and the things that you should look for. So you can quickly take a look from my profile through my university website. Well, just simply search Murdoch University profile Lance Fong, and this is the page you expect to see. So you will see a certain well、um, sub hack. Well, just click on the the,、um, the icon and go to different aspect as well. I just highlight well two aspect、uh, later on. So where am I now? The perfect city is very close to Malaysia, and I, I must say that I, I have a Um, very fond memories. I like Malaysia. I, I like the、uh, the food of Malaysia, the people. At one time, when I was working in Kuching, actually, I got very close、um, working relations with Malaysia because、uh, we have the Sarawak campus. And there was one year I even there six times in a year. And I also have students from Malaysia as well. Even a good number of both undergrad and postgraduate. And also, I have the、uh, experience working with colleagues in Ajibuyi. Uh, with、um, Malaysia section, I must acknowledge we're、well, one of the good friends. Well, I still remember he, the Professor Masuki.、Uh, unfortunately,、uh, he died at a young age. But really, he is a, such a fine gentleman, and he has、uh, contributed so much to the development of a、uh, Malaysia section. I remember him always. So, Murdoch University is located on the southern part of Perth. Well, you, we are mainly as Swan River, and、uh, we have four university in in Perth. Well, public university. Well. Uh, Murdoch is the second one oldest established as a research university.、Uh, the oldest one is the University of Western Australia, which has more than hundred years history. And then some others coming up very strongly is、uh, Curtin University and、uh, Edith Cowan University. We also have a private university, the Notre Dame University, which is related、uh, to the university in USA. So it's a nice city, and we have a lot of Malaysian、uh, living in you know in、uh, Perth. Well, even my neighbours along,、well, I get at least what two,、uh, two or three of them are, are Malaysian. And、uh, we have people from the East Malaysia,、uh, West Malaysia, Sabah, and, and, and I know a lot of them.、Okay. So, well, quickly go through my background, and some of them have been read out already. I started off my technical training as a radio officer. Well, looking back, it's、uh, close to forty,、uh, fifty years now. And I studied in in,、um, in UK, and I have the pleasure.、Uh, looking back, I, I was really in Cardiff at the same time as Professor、uh, Bohan. It was really interesting. And、uh, I got my PhD in the UWA. I work in Singapore, and when I was in Singapore, well, I go over to、um, Malaysia quite often. You just drive over to Johor, and、um, I work in Singapore、uh, Curtin University. I migrated here in 1988. I work in Murdoch University. Officially, I retired in 2015, but I am still having the honorary、uh, appointment as an emeritus professor. So I still supervise, and you can still see my citation later on. Actually, it's still growing over the years. Well, I have already. Um, uh, some of these positions you have already heard. Well, maybe that relating to my role in you know looking at the papers and looking at the、uh, grant application and all those things. Well, recently I, I have、um, got an opportunity to serve in the Region Ten 
again, well, I, uh, educational activities well, committee, well, I, I'm, the, I'm the honor to be the chair for these two years. And I have mentioned earlier on, I play uh, some roles on the conference quality well, for the past five or six years. And I've been the chair of the conference quality committee and also the technical program integrity committee. I'll mention briefly, well, these two committees later on. And I'm also involved with the new initiatives committee. That's another arm of RGBE, whereby we have around three millions of budget per year. And then, well, we, we give out grants supporting for a couple of thousand dollars, tens, hundred thousand, even a million dollars or so. And I also have uh, been working on the um, RGBE system and cybernetic society as one of the, uh, uh, the board of governors um, member at large. And I have reached maximum for six years on the committee. And I also serve in the Australian Council, the section and the uh, uh, WA chapter for SNC Society as well. Well, coming back to my profile, well, if you go to the profile, you can also link to see the research repository that I have 332 papers. Now, I must clarify that, well, don't be, um, don't think that, well, I mean, I, I would say that, well, times have changed. At one time, that a lot of um, number of publication is means a good thing, but now actually things are changing. And also, well, from Australian government point of view, because in the past, well, that could be translated to money to the university. So that's why we were encouraged to, to do so. But nowadays, actually, they're changing their focus. So I'll cover that later on. But having said that, well, I'm really honored to have the um, opportunity to supervise, well, to completion, at least 31 students. And I highlight some of these are Malaysian. I have a student, well, Kim Ping Chong, and actually his home is in Miri. And um, uh, on... Uh, Ong Go. actually, he is working in University uh, Technology, Malaysia, Malacca. He's a professor there over now. Another one is um, Alinda Lim, uh, and then Melinda Lee. And actually, she stayed back after she finished her, her study, now working in um, a Purdue University. Uh, Eric Lee is uh, from, uh, from, uh, from China. But right now, actually, he is working in Amazon. He is taking care of uh, one of the largest um, storage systems. Uh, some others you will see that most of my artists, well, they are a lot from uh, from Thailand, uh, from Middle East, uh, Indonesia as well, Jeffrey from Indonesia. Well, Jonathan Pan actually from Singapore. It's quite interesting that he, he is working in Singapore, a police force, and uh, part of the thesis is really working on cyber security. And I've even some artists were coming from, from uh, Bhutan, um, Pima, and, um, well, some of the other uh, Thai students. You will also see that, well, my public record uh, on, put on the website like the um, Google Scholar. And as I have said, well, I, I retired in 2015. You can see that well, my citation is still growing. So I keep on telling my, my colleagues that they should really retire early if they want to have more citations. My H index is 27. I wouldn't say it's really the, the top of the uh, really high. Well, I've seen people with much higher than that. But really, I, I think I've done my, uh, my part. And I can see that, well, really majority of my citation on the screen have been growing. Well, since I Join Murdoch University. And then I'll, you take a look at research gates. Well, these are important because of when you look at some researchers, well, someone you never know before, and these are the information you can take a look. Well, what are the performance well, in the past and what are the areas they work on? Because later on, I'll talk about some of the plans. When you look into networking, you need to look for collaborator. Well, those are the information you look into. So I also have. Um, information in the public domain on the computer science and photography. Uh, from uh, Archive Explore point of view, well, they've collected 126 of my papers. So you can see that, well, there's no, nowadays, well, the digital footprint of uh, any academics are all publicly um, displayed. Well, you can also take a look at some other index like Scopus, uh, SCI, Web of Science, etc., etc. Now, let's finish the part and introduce myself and go to the main part of this talk, well, publishing, uh, writing, and uh, submission. So we go back to the fundamental question, why should I write and why should I publish? Then, of course, the first one I would answer is, is part of the training, because uh, if you started off as a, a researcher, uh, starting off postgraduate research student, then really I would expect the publication will be a, one very good uh, training so that you uh, are going to prepare your, your finding and result will let the world know. And obviously the publication, Publication process, well, is something you need to learn as well. And uh, in a way that we are already quite fortunate that nowadays with the technology, whereby we everything just on the computer, cut and paste, was sent out by, by a electronic format. And I can tell you many, many years ago when I first started, well, everything is on paper. And you have to really do a real cut and paste, really using the glue and cut it and paste 
and then having the size, I think 1.33, uh, bigger than the, and the final size, so they can shrink it down. Oh, well, it's very interesting. To, to me, that really makes your process of writing something, you need to be extra careful. Because if you make any mistake, that means you have to start all over again, cutting the pay, cut and paste, and then they'll put a whole lot of the section alignment. Not like nowadays, no doubt it makes things so much easier. But unfortunately, I also see that people can be getting very careless. So those is one of the factors. Well, when we talk about the quality of the paper, we will, well, from the um, from the content quality point of view, well, we take a look at well, is the author and also the program, the technical program review committee doing their jobs or not. That will even well govern. Maybe that you we, we are not even able to accept the papers in, in explore well because of very sloppiness. Well, in, in what they do in the preparing for the for the manuscript. Then, of course, in terms of the actual result itself, one of the reasons you want to publish is not only just you want to add another line in your CV, but rather you want to validate your results. And also, well, you can share with your peer, with your discipline. But that will lead on well, later on to the networking and collaboration. And also, importantly, you must establish your credential. So in particular, when you talk about grants and all those things, one of the things people looking at will be your track record. Have you done enough work in this area? Well, even sometimes when you publish well, some work, well, people also take a look Well, how much well, background work you have done, not only you know, you read other people's work, and also your own publication, etc. And I have also mentioned about the network. Well, that is really part of the plan well, in your uh, career. And of course, well, one of the fundamental reasons we, we, we do what we do as an academic is we are contributing to knowledge. Okay? And of course, well, ultimately, well, nowadays, uh, I, I hate to say it, but then again, well, you look at people, they claim about uh, publish and perish. Uh, it's really part of survival. That is part of, of, of life, really. I, I say that, um, unfortunately, that's what the uh, management and the government is looking at. So maybe we take a look. Well, what are the trends were going on? This article, actually, is not new. You're looking at the article is around two years ago. Well, uh, one and a half years, September 2019. What does it say? Too much academic research is being published. So really, uh, some of us well, who've been well, involved well, in the academic career for over the years, you know that that is one of the things you're getting more and more is, well, you get invitation to be a reviewer, you get invitation to be on the, on the editorial board. And then well, sometimes we may get people invite you to, to, to work on a book, a book chapter, et cetera, et cetera. But really, we go back to the fundamental question well, from the public point of view, well, how do the publisher feel themselves? I mean, even I hear well, during, well um, editorial board well, in the technical committees, in the constant journal, they always complain, I have so many submissions, whereby I don't have enough review, it. I don't have enough time to go through it. And as a matter of fact, you take a look at this one. The decision by the Review of Higher Education, a highly respected academic journal, to temporarily suspend submission due to a backlog of more than two years worth of articles awaiting reviews or publications set off uh, a Twitter storm and much debate in the corridor of academia about the future academic publishing. In particular, it's very foundation, blind peer review. So what does it mean? It means that you have so much, because well, up to this stage, well, we are relying on the well, peer review. We, we expect well, people who are expert in the real interested in your work, able to give you unbiased and fair well, comment, so that we're well, hoping that your, your, inf your, your, your finding can be shared well, to the world. But then again, you become too much. That they're not able, I'm not even talking about well, some of the work may not be even ethical. So that's another issue we're facing. So really getting too much. So how do they expect to, to handle it? And then, well, and also another, we, we have a lot of reason for that. But one of the reasons is also now university is now going to what they call the thesis by publication. So what it means is, well, they claim that well, you can have a couple of papers. Uh, I mean, in the past, well, we have that before, but it's not too many. But now certainly I see that a lot of people are trying to adopt this, uh, this approach. In the past, we expect the people putting a good paper in a good journal paper. But now I see people just putting a few conference papers that they want to, oh, there's nothing wrong with that if it's a good, if it is a, if it is a good paper. But then again, sometimes, well, the acceptance rate of the conference, well, it's not that uh, low. I mean, it's, it's high because well, it's so easy to get in. Then we begin to doubt, well, the validity well, of the work in here. And also in terms of the... Uh, the, the quality of the review itself, well, sometimes we look at the reviews come back compared to the journal, well, which is much more thorough because they have to, because they maintain it. But a lot of time on the conferences, they may come back only a few lines. Oh, yes, good, no good. 
Well, so that is the, the issue we're facing. So by doing that, you have well an uh, explosion of the paper being published. So all this has led to an explosion of scientific publication that overwhelmed the publication system and make it impossible either for the traditional and even generally effective peer review system to work on the scientific or community to evaluate a lot of scientific research. So the implication is, well, you're getting more difficult to be published as well, because from the journal itself, they're, they're overwhelmed with it. Even if they're going to review it, it takes a long time, as you have seen well, the comment earlier on. On the other hand, that also means that, well, the people looking at all the papers, they begin to doubt the, the value in that. So that's, again, another thing so from IEEE conference quality concern. We have some subcommittee looking at well, how to set with the metrics, well, how to validate a valid science content. So they're talking about, well, no one knows how many journals are there, but several estimate around 30,000, close around 2 million articles being published every year. We are not even talking about some of those journals. They might be even thick. They might be even, well, trying to make money from you. So that's, again, another topic, but I'm not going to even go into that area. So what else? Even as, as reason as now, well, know that all of us are facing the challenge of the coronavirus, well, COVID-19. And then you also see that you've got a tsunami. Actually, this one is a very interesting picture. The tsunami of papers. Okay, so they're saying the scientists are drowning in the COVID-19 papers. Well, can you choose keep them afloat? Well, this particular article is not so much, well, uh, it mentioned about the fact, but they're also talking about, is it possible to use some AI tools well, to, to, to help them to screen through the papers? Because uh, they're saying that about this particular um, virologist, well, uh, he is testing this uh, COVID-19, but they say he just simply cannot cope. Because 4,000 papers in one week. So if you imagine someone well, who's trying to do the, his job or her job, who try to be keep updated with the latest information. Well, part of our role is supposed to be just try to read as much as we can within our field so that we know what's going on. But it's impossible, really. That's what you said. So that's why you go to some kind of uh, AI uh, work. They're talking about a number have been reaching around 23,000 well, since um, January and now doubling every 20 days. So you just imagine the rate of increasing. So no doubt that some people will jump on the bandwagon. Anything they think that they hook onto the name of COVID-19, they're going to get it published. But really, is that what we want well, from our academic well, uh, world? So what are my observations? As I have said, well, I have been well, in here now close to 30 years now, well, in two universities and also in the um, academic and uh, management role and also looking at the um, uh, our Archibald Society point of view. Well, I can simply say you can feel it as well. You can, you can justify my statement. The university management and government are growing interest and focus on the global ranking. That's one, another one. They want you to be competitive. They want you to be well, on top of the world. Everyone wants that. So that's the justification of expenditure and investment. Another one is well, they would look, they would love, they love to have some quantifiable measurement to assess and compare the staff performance. Well, of course, well, this is they go down to looking at, oh, okay, how many papers, how many citations, what H factors, well, what is the impact, and then uh, and all those other parameters. When I was in the university senate, they even tried to come up with some comparison, looking at how much money that the staff bring in. Well, not only just based on the paper, they're looking at the research grant, even they're looking at how many students, well, the, stu well, the staff is supervising, how many students, how big is the class. When it comes down, it's a figure. But luckily, well, they, they do not release that one. But to me, that you just like putting all the stuff well, on the supermarket shelf, you're comparing with this meat is better than the other meat or not. But nevertheless, that's what happened, okay? Because well, to them, it's easy for them. So some of the people studying this career, even as a student, you will get no choice. You may look at it, well, I have to publish. I have to get somewhere to, to, to publish as well. Otherwise, I won't get, I won't get uh, graduated. So I, I have to ask the question, well, are these the ultimate aims of our study and research? But nevertheless, while well, this is a fact, I'm only saying that this is my observation. I'm not passing any judgment at all. So if that is the case, well, what can you do about it? So this is where I see the writing and submission well, comes in. And hopefully that I'm giving you maybe some plan so you can just consider that uh, to help you with your research career. So as I said, well, this is entirely my own opinion. So I'm not really quoting anyone. And I'm just, well, giving some suggestions. First of all, you really need to have some kind of research plan. You need to be long-term. You need to think about, well, the topic you're working on. You need to have a publication plan as well. 
Well, when I supervise a student, well, one of the first things, well, we have to agree very uh, beginning is, okay, what is the work that he or she is going to work on? And we need to plan, okay, how many papers we think that at least is sufficient, well, to carry the student uh, to, to, to meet the requirement. And on, on top of that, I also hope that the student can also work on additional papers well, and also hope that even if graduate, well, they should really carry on the work as well. Another important part is a lot of time the student have overlooked, well, is a networking plan. And really what it means is you really need to set up the people you know within your similar areas of research. And also another one is on the grant and project plans. Well, this is another very popular topic. I've been giving at least more than half a dozen uh, already. The people interested in money. Uh, but it's not only that, because well, the university also looking at grant well, success as part of the performance of a researcher. Okay, again, come back to money. So you have to really try. Well, it's tough. I can, I can assure you it's not easy well, to get grants, especially looking at big grants, but you have to start somewhere. And ultimately, you need to manage. You need to manage your time. You need to manage well, the resources. So I'm going to talk about all this one at a time. So when I talk about the research plan is, it's really start all the way from your doctoral well, research. But don't look at your graduation, having a degree is the end of it. You really have to consider the long-term plan of your research. Well, even you may, may not be within the academic world because you may be able to carry well, your work even in the, in the industry. Well, Earlier on, I highlight well, my student, Eric, who is working well, in, the, um, in Amazon. As a matter of fact, he told me that uh, he graduated around 10 years ago. Well, uh, and then well, he told me that well, he is really working on the system, the structure. It's more or less just like what he has been doing and proposal in his PhD work. Although at that time, we were just looking at a parallel computing, we're looking at um, a cluster computing, we just hook up a whole bunch around 20 OPC and then demonstrate some of the, uh, the, 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 the protocol and the system where we're talking about. And he said, actually, it's very similar. Well, then the first thing for the research plan is, well, you have to start writing the research proposal. And then, well, in the course of study, then there's one of the major well, proposals you need to write. It's kind of the research paper, it's a research paper as well. It's a confirmation of candidature. You need to prepare for ongoing milestone. You need to give a regular uh, publication that goes in the publication plan. And also you have to answer the question, well, where will your research lead you and what do you do after your thesis submission? I always ask the question, well, even before the students start to want a PhD, I always ask, well, why you want to do a PhD? What will you do if you've got a PhD? Some of, a lot of my students, they themselves are a full-time staff before they come over so that they got a scholarship. But then again, I always encourage them, but well, don't stop well, when you finish your degree, because I know that you, you need to have a degree because of your, of your job security, because I know that it happened in, um, in, in, in uh, uh, now in, in Australia, actually, more or less is like before you have it. Well, I know that in Thailand, they also go into that. In, in, in India, I also happening as well. I know in a couple of years' time, all the, uh, all the uh, uh, lecturers, they need to have the uh, PhD. And I'm sure that it's happening in Malaysia, in Singapore, all other parts of the world as well. So you really need to plan beforehand. You think that about, if you think that your research work is really worth um, continue to pursue it, I would say that about well, postdoc may be one, that you will continue a little bit extra in a year or two as a postdoc researcher, and then really give you the opportunity to publish some nice paper. And then by doing that, well, pays your way to academic appointment. But I myself uh, consider myself lucky because of when I well, do my PhD, I was doing that by part-time. And I finished more or less the equivalent to well, two and a half years full-time. I finished in half, five years or so. So I don't need to worry about appointment. But I can tell you nowadays, well, after you get a PhD, looking for academic appointment is very difficult and very competitive. Even if you get a job, a lot of time that you don't even get a tenure easily. And, and you can see this uh, article, people been floating from job to job on part-time on contract, et cetera. Even some university in some country, they don't even give a long-term contract. Well, they only give, well, they don't give a tenure anymore. It's entirely on contract, three years. And sometimes, uh, if you, if your work is really good, I strongly encourage students really should look into industrial uh, appointment. In other words, well, if really you, you, you think that your work is so good, well, you should really put in the practical use as well. And you really need to know, well, what are the, well, what is your scale? Well, what, what, can you convince well, your employee, your employer to think that well, your work is going to contribute because they don't want to just get you as a theoretical or who only can write paper. But having said that, well, even if you go into organization, 
Well, like a Google, like Facebook, uh, like a Microsoft, uh, they have the research arm, but they are dedicated to writing papers for those people inside there as well. And maybe if you are so good, really, you should also start a uh, startup uh, entrepreneur. Again, it's another topic. Okay, let's come back to the, to the next plan. You really need to have a publication plan. I have already mentioned earlier on that, well, even at the beginning of PhD study, I have already shot out the course of, with my student. Well, really, I would expect you to, to publish a paper after the first six months, because after you write your candidature um, yeah. report, well, yeah. you should have your, uh, some kind of a review or literature review paper or survey paper. It should be done. You should be able to write one or two papers while well, proposing your 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 research question, the hypothesis, so you can go into a, some small conference and try to get some feedback. And then well, by well, one and a half years, second, you should have some well more decent journal, uh, conference paper to 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 uh, disseminate your result. And then you, from those well few papers, you can be able to come up with a journal paper. And then by the time you submit your thesis, you should have around three or four papers well finished. And then well you. Although I'm not asking them to do the publication um, thesis by publication, but at least they should be able to demonstrate the work has already been validated well by the, by the academic com uh, community. So you need to work out how many papers, but do not look at the number as the end. Don't just publish for the sake of the numbers. I confess some of the papers, well, in the past, well, during my time that actually you asked me, well, I, I think that they may not necessarily need to be done. But my philosophy is at that time, I have a lot of PQ students. So I, I think that I need to help them. So you need to plan out how often. Of course, if you are already well, working in the academic world, then maybe your appointment would even have some number associated with that. Well, our university, well, although I'm, I'm no longer uh, working full time, but I heard from my colleague, well, they're now depending on the position. If you are a professor, associate professor, you need to publish so so many papers well, on, on tier one, tier two, or whatever it is. So they have some kind of, of figures uh, on their head. So but also the most important thing is what do you intend to publish? So this go back to your research plan. Because well, the material and the research question you're asking, it must be relating to it. You don't publish for the sake of publishing. You want to publish the result, which is valid science, which is make a contribution uh, to the community, to knowledge. So you need to well, but you, you need to uh, work in such a way that you don't need to, to put too much. Well, you, you just simply, well, you think it's sufficient. You are not going to write a 20 pages paper well, to, a, to a conference or vice versa. You don't submit just two or three pages well, to a journal. So you need to send appropriate material well, to the venue well, you are going to publish. And also the first question, is it really worth publishing? Well, as the member of the technical program uh, integrity committee, one of the things we look at is, well, we look at the content. We say, well, look here. The format looks nice. The English is okay. But then again, there's no value in it. It's just like an undergraduate, well, uh, a lab report. Someone use a math lab, okay, run a simulation on this problem with this data, well, uh, getting from the public. So what, what value I get? Is it really contributing the knowledge? No. You just tell me you have done something only. You didn't tell me anything new. So those are the things you need to well, put those questions uh, as a reviewer. Is it really worth? I always well, consider this way. If someone needs to download a paper from IEEE, the person needs to pay around 30 something dollars. Then I ask the question, well, will you pay around 30 something dollars US to download your own paper? That, that, is, that is something is a good indication. Then of course, the next one is where do you publish? Well, we, uh, we, I, I'm not going through all the possible venue. I'm just simply differentiate between the conference and journal. Because well, as I have said, well, even in the university itself, now they, they begin to have a little bit of a restriction of where can you publish, and I explain why. Well, coming back to the network plan that um, I had mentioned earlier on, that you're coming up next one, that maybe sometime you need to publish together with some people. So maybe um, for networking purpose, because you have a joint project. And also what to do after the paper is published. Now, a lot of time we just leave it as it is. Maybe we just leave it as well. Hopefully, they're going to be cited. But now these things have changed now. Then really, if you have a good and substantial paper, you may need to generate some kind of publicity uh, of this paper. You may need to, to treat, well, um, again, from, I, from uh, Australia ex well, experience, now we're looking at something called impact. And the impact is, well, they may look into things like, well, are there any social media that mention about your paper? Have you ever been invited? Well, to, to, to present your work, but those are the, well, intangible impact they try to measure as well. 
So this is something I'll talk about later on from the LC Australian Research Council. Networking plan. So who are the other researchers working in your area on research topic? Well, no doubt, well, when you first started, of course, well, the one working among your group of your supervisor will be one, but really you should also look around the world as well. Well, you have to take a look, well, are they really, uh, what is the standing? Well, you, sometimes uh, you may try to approach someone who is really advanced or who is very senior, but the thing is you have to ask yourself the question, why should they collaborate with you? Well, geographic location, is it feasible you're going to work with him or her, and also at what stage of the career is? And then you have to explore clearly, is there any chance of collaboration? Well, sometimes I've received people send messages to me, well, they, they know me through Facebook, and that's why they say, oh, can I work with you or this thing? And then they ask me, well, what, well, what do you work on? And I find it's a very strange question. You want to work with me, and you don't know what am I working on. So well, you really need to do some homework first. So this could be a different way of a collaboration. You could be a joint research work, a joint publication, or maybe you can work together in some technical committee. So you can invite people into your technical committee, you initiate, or maybe uh, you get yourself known, and you, you just volunteer to be involved with that. Normally, that will involve uh, some kind of review editorial work as well. Or maybe it's a conference program committee. Editorial board, I'm referring to, could be books, it could be journals, and that could be part of the technical uh, committee of a society as well. Or maybe sometimes uh, if you have funds and you are uh, available, then maybe you can see that, uh, can you able to attach to other university while doing your sabbatical? Uh, we also, well, our university, we call study, uh, study leave. But if you are in the position that you have the student under your supervision, then maybe you have the exchange of student as well. And of course, when you talk about the grants, well, you can well, go to grants together. And this is very important that you have a, a team which is a compatible and a good record. And the most important thing is that if you want to work with people, networking people, you have to go back to what are the win-win situations. Okay, you do not just think that because, oh, he, uh, I can, he can help me. But you can also ask a certain question, what can you offer to the other side? <coughs> Excuse me. Then coming to the grants and the project plan. Well, as I mentioned earlier on, now one of the indicators, well, the university, well, looking at the performance of a staff or researchers or the academic, is how much money the person can bring in. So maybe you have to join some kind of uh, a joint grants as well. Well, you need to have some kind of common interest. Because quite unlikely, you can get a major grant entirely by yourself, unless your work is really so so great that no one has done it. Otherwise, more than likely, there are people in the in the area locally, well, within your country, maybe uh, internationally. You need to work with them. You need to be complementary, okay? So you need to complement one another. You need to have some compatible track record. So the worst thing can happen to you is, well, you think someone is going to be a big name, you try to invite the person in, but then again, the person may not have a track record, well, in that area of research. And you don't want the reviewer, well, pick it up and say that, well, it's not balanced. Well, you just bring the guys in, just using his name. But then again, well, the guy is not going to contribute to your project. You need to be some kind of a negotiation, well, how to make the workflow uh, distribution equitable. In particular, sometimes, well, that money involved, uh, the university will have a hand in it, in managing it. So how they're locating the resources. Maybe you need to have some kind of agreement Well, how you join and how you exit as well. And also another thing, well, in case that your work will have some commercial value, then you may need to agree beforehand. You don't really want to come to the end and you need to meet the person in court. Well, there might be an IP issue, there might be copyright issue and patent. So it all depends on the nature of the work you're involved with. And also, if you are doing that, and more than likely, you may need to involve with the legal department well, on the contract and liability. Normally, come to that point is well, unless you really have some very unique finding and innovation. Well, things happen, especially in the medical field. You'd be surprised. Well, if we see articles, uh, we have uh, some professor in the uh, UWA and the guy invent uh, some kind of, um, uh, I can't remember exactly uh, what is it, but some kind of devices. Well, and in the end, well, pick up a fight at university, but you want, and going to bring him a lot of money. Management plan, obviously, the first one is the time management. Well, we, we everyone feel that um, we've got so much to do and so little time. You really need a balance. You can't do all. Okay, so this is where you need to manage the resources, manage well, the, the, um, uh, the, the human resources. Well, when I say the human resources, I'm assuming that you are 
in a position whereby you have a couple of students under you. You might even need to employ the research assistants. You need to work with your colleagues and also the out, uh, outside collaborators. I mentioned about the networking. And also you need to manage the resources and the finance. The worst thing can happen to you is when you got money from the grant and you do not use it properly. And I can tell you there are legal implications. So you need to follow the rules and the management, the do's and don'ts, and make sure the paper trails are well kept, okay? Again, depending on well, your university. So sometimes uh, you might have a uh, university help you with uh, some office, office staff. Otherwise, if you manage it yourself, at one time, well, we even have the credit card from the university that we can authorize, well, to use our own. And if you're not able to, to, to do the things right, well, uh, giving the, the receipt and all those things, you could be in big trouble. And also another thing, looking at relationship. Well, in a way, it's close to the networking part, but I'm talking about a relationship maybe go beyond, well, your, your collaborator working with you on the project. I'm talking about the other aspect of the uh, decision maker. When I talk about the, the university, well, you really can go all the way up to the top. You're talking about the, the, the research management department. Well, uh, uh, oh no, sorry, we got R&D department. We got the vice chancellors of R&D and all those things. You need to know the people in, inside out as well so that not only just simply you're able to do the work, but rather you're able to manage the process. They can go smoothly. If there's any question, you know who to ask. So those are the things. Well, actually, it's getting quite complex. So, but, but, but then again, well, I, I'd rather tell you now so that you are not going to be caught short. And of course, well, I myself, have, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. I have been in IEEE, and I must say that, well, you give me a lot of um, uh, well, opportunity to network and, and well, a lot of fine and professionals I, I, I met um, and work with them as well. And also, actually, we also well, give me the lessons well in, in, in managing things like running the, the conferences, well, running the committees and all those things. So if any one of you in the audience are not yet an IGBE member, I highly recommend you and I would like to welcome you to the IGBE family. Now, let's come back to the research paper now. I start off very quickly looking at some research proposals. Okay, so this is uh, for the purpose for the students. So I'm assuming that you need to go for admissions, well, uh, confirmation of a candidature, and also the structure of a research proposal. So if you are uh, somewhere, maybe you're undergrad, maybe you're doing a master by coursework, you really want to uh, do the PhD and all those things, but I'm sharing with you that um, uh, what our university look for. So our university, well, if you want to uh, apply for admission, I know this because I was well, the research uh, director within the school and also Within, within the department as well. So first of all, I will look at things are you eligible? So we have a minimum requirement. Not only you need to have the undergrad degree, but of course, well, we expect you to have the research uh, training. You have gone through that. And also when you take a look at the minimum requirements in terms of your grade, your GPA, et cetera. And then the important thing is, well, you must uh, have some kind of uh, supervisor who is able to work with you. Because you know, having a student is also some kind of commitment from the university. Well, that we are going to help the student to go through the, the training and study within this uh, three to four years or so. And then this is not from everyone, but rather you've got a close relationship with your principal supervisor and co-supervisor. Well, in our case, actually, we do have a supervisory team at a board. So we have um, a su principal supervisor, co-supervisor. Sometimes we may even have some adjunct a uh, supervisor from the industry, from outside, well, in case we form what is some kind of uh, additional expertise. And then we have an independent uh, staff, well, who will be the chairperson. So they, well, he or she will take care of any problem comes up. It's, it's not unusual. Sometimes you've got a uh, relationship issue uh, between the supervisor and the student. So we need to set up all those things to take care of the student. So but anyway, that will be at the beginning stage. Uh, you need to well, look for a potential supervisor, someone who is interested in the area that you want to work on. Well, we expect the student to put in a simple expression of interest form, but ultimately it will be a, a proper form. This is the one that's the most important. We want to see that what is the student interested in so that he can try to match with the supervisor. So the question is then, well, how do I know my research topic? Then in general, there'll be two well, possibilities. Uh, one is that you come up with the proposal yourself. Well, it could be something from your previous work. You might have done some project in undergraduate, or maybe in some of the master by coursework project, you would like to continue that, but well, that'd be quite okay. It means that you have some background understanding. But maybe something you're interested in, well, but you have 
well, you, you do not need to be in debt, but you should know enough in that problem. And then alternatively, it could be some from a supervisor. Whereby a supervisor well, may have some a project in hand, and he or she will really have want some student to help to join a team to be part of the uh, research work. So sometimes they may give you some list. But my suggestion is, well, no doubt it's good that you, you work this way. Well, you may feel that it's easier for you, but then again, you have to be very careful in the long term. How are you going to carry forward because of once you leave well, the team? Are you going to have a similar work? Are you able to carry out independently? Or if you are even working in a similar, um, similar space, or are you going to be even the competitor or when you're applying for grant? So those are the things you need to be careful. So a lot of times you really need to discuss well, your, your the ideas well, with your potential supervisor at the very beginning stage. Then you require some kind of a email exchange. And finally, because sometimes well, you, you might think that the supervisor is suitable, but you must also take into consideration that the supervisor may not uh, be available as well. In our university, we got limitation. We can only pick up to five full-time students. So if you have too many, then the university say, no, well, it doesn't seem right. Well, you, you are not able to handle that number of students. Well, so a lot of times that you, you got a better chance while well, working with some younger staff. Well, the good thing is younger staff, well, they are much more enthusiastic in taking the students so to help them to, well, for their own personal well, advancement of the career so that people work with them. And then, well, they might be also able to spend a little bit more time well, with the, with the uh, student. Only disadvantage is maybe the younger staff, well, but they may not command well, that kind of a standing compared to older staff. Older staff, well, maybe is good, but then again, well, they may not have uh, too much time because well, they have uh, too, maybe uh, some others roll on the head as well. So you have to play a balance act. So how do you develop your research topic? The first thing is you must read a lot. You must really read a lot of materials. You must immerse yourself in the journals. Well, you have to focus on the research question. Well, what are you going to solve the problem? But then again, you need to have some flexibility built in. So as, because as you go along, well, you, you discover new things, well, you may well, bring changes well, to your plan. And more importantly, well, you need to be updated. You need to keep on reading. But don't just think that, okay, I, I get a meter, that's the end of it. You have to continue with your reading. It is ultimately it's essential. You must well, work with your supervisor. So this is our forms. Well, when you apply as an international student, you can see that we got a range of, of a, a, a degree available uh, from the uh, more generic PhD level into the more what we call professional doctorate. Well, some basic information, obviously, like the, the personal details. And then English requirements, another one. And then, well, we have our scholarship available. We got two scholarships. One is an international postgraduate research scholarship, IPRS. That is from the Australian government. And then another one is the Murdoch International Postgraduate Scholarship. That is well, from the university. Well, the, the judging process is the same. Actually, you have no, no difference. Well, you can just simply take, it will not give you any advantage or disadvantages, but sometimes some of those, are, they might have some limitation on the terms of number, and also the slightly difference in terms of the money they give out. Well, I have mentioned that the reason you write because you want to build up your credential. So that's why, well, when you apply for scholarship for admission, if you have demonstrated research experience, how you demonstrate that, that is with your journals, uh, book chapters, conference, and all those things. So that means that by the time, well, if you are submitting this application, you are able to demonstrate you have already been doing this. This will help you a lot, okay? So that means that you really need to start a little bit earlier, not just wait until you come to start your PhD, then you start publishing. That's what I mentioned about this publication plan. So what is required at our Murdoch University at the admission process? In this case, you need to write, write up this, not a lot, 300 to 500 words, okay? You just have an overview of the research aims, likely question, and possible outcome. Now, you may say that if I just submit, submit like this one, my answer is no, because of you need to negotiate and work with your potential supervisor first. He or she more than likely will be able to help you if she really wants you to come in. Because of, if they agree to take you in, more or less they're expecting you're able to help him or her as well as part of the team. So that's why, do not just simply write something and then put the whole thing in. But really, start looking at a supervisor, discuss with him or her, is there any possibility that, that you'll be able to accept it um, un under uh, the research team? Nevertheless, well, this is just a general thing. 
you do not need to you know, this will not be the major criteria that, that you are going to be admitted of course well, it's necessary okay but it's not the only one so we look at all the others like the english like your gpa and all those things now um, assuming that you have been admitted you got no problem you got go for all the visas well financial you even lucky you never get a scholarship now you start a full-time student then the first thing you need to deliver will be the confirmation of candidature so this is what our terms i know that in, in the other university you may have some other terms but if you take a look in terms of the main expectation, well, from the student, you can see that research proposal need to be 3,000 to 4,000 words. So it's, well, much bigger, 10 times more than well, when you apply for your admission. And then sometimes, depending on the nature of the work, maybe you even expect up to around 6,000 words for some kind of um, uh, academic writing. And then you also need to give an oral presentation. Now, the oral presentation is really a reflection of what you have in the document. You need to provide things like the overview, resume, why you want to do this project, what's the significance of your project, what is the aim, what you try to do, what is the methodology, well, what is the timeline? Because the assumption is, well, if you have been given six months well, to do a full-time research, you should know, you should be able to plan clearly of what you intend to do in the next two and a half years to three years. So that's why it is important uh, to have this as a document to demonstrate you're able to be a, well, to be an independent researcher uh, eventually. We also have some others, well, coursework as well, just mainly just uh, make the student understand issues like the ethics, um, like the integrity and all those things. So those are part of our requirement. Now, looking at the research proposal, that really is quite similar to what you expect when in a paper, an introduction, the background significance, okay? So you must be able to articulate, well, no doubt that well, you expect people to understand the technical details, but then again, you must also prepare some of the readers may not necessarily well following but that, that field. You must bear in mind that you have already spent six months or maybe even before that, you have already read quite a lot before you get admitted. So you cannot expect everyone is going to be on the same uh, level as you. You must be able to explain because ultimately, well, when you write a thesis and write paper, it's really a communication. The main aim is to communicate. You communicate well, what you try to tell the reader. So your introduction is a brief overview of your project, kind of background of your project, why you want to do it. The main thing is you want to prove you're familiar with the theoretical and empirical contribution of other researchers. So that's why I said that you need to keep track of what other people are doing. Why is this significant? Okay, what, have you, what are you going to contribute towards this? You haven't done yet, but you have to know beforehand. If I build a house, I need to know what is the house going to be look like well, when this is built. So this is the thing you need to tell me. Methodology. Methodology more or less demonstrate that are you able to carry out the research? Are you able to understand well, what is the plan and the task well, you're going to do? You must be very clear about the boundary. The worst thing can happen to some kind of proposal is people just go too extreme. What extreme is you make it too general, too broad. Well, making too much claims that you're going to do a lot of things. It's not, well, people, well, we are working in, in, in the academic world. Well, for many years, we know that it's not going to happen. You only get around three years, at the most four years. Okay, sometimes we get extension a little bit more. But then again, you are not going to solve all the problem unless, well, even your genius, well, you may not even have that. You don't have the resources. On the other extreme is, well, you make your proposal too trivial. Then you, that's not really worth the time you put in. So this is the thing you need to be realistic. You need to do things that, okay, within this uh, agreeable time, you should be able to deliver. And of course, well, you need to have the references. Then, then now, come to the next question. Well, where should I publish my work? Then, of course, well, there are a lot of values. Now, I've already mentioned that, um, that nowadays, section people looking at the papers is not only the paper itself, but rather they're also looking at social media. So really, also, it's not, it's, it's, it's not a bad idea. Really, you start with things like, well, internally, you have started with an internal presentation. It's not unusual that, okay, you may have to do a yearly presentation. Well, when we do our candidacy, you need to do all presentation. But well, when I lead a team, well, normally I have a regular uh, internal presentation among the team and also uh, uh, among within the school as well. And also within the professional society, actually, we can also organize a lot of workshop and presentation. Sometimes you may require internal reports. Okay, so you can just write, well, submit within the school. It's not really for outside. You could be writing your own blog articles or social media, LinkedIn, people submitting to that as well. You can contribute towards the book chapters and books. Now, this was slightly different. 
sometimes uh, some of the books they themselves really go through the same process. Really, it's a collection of papers. So really, there's one pro uh, one way. Sometimes uh, you may just publish your books entirely by yourself. So the only people that they judge is really from editorial point of view, uh, formatting. So those are not really considered as a formal well, uh, uh, referee uh, uh, articles. But then, on the other hand, in our blind review mechanism, really we are looking at a peer review type. So these are different types. Okay, sometimes on the lower end, maybe just a two pages of uh, abstract, extended abstract. Really, we don't really consider as a formal paper as such. But there are also conference papers. This majority of the papers are being published. The letters, journals, the letters actually are smaller, smaller size. Well, they are, they are published. The limitation on number of a uh, diagram and the references they use, or maybe even magazine articles as well. So in IEEE, we do have a definition uh, on how to differentiate between the journals and the transaction. Although sometimes the terms are a little bit blurred, okay? But uh, normally the letters you would expect is much more shorter. There's just short papers, approximately three to four pages, and then uh, um, uh, nine the double space pages. The conference is, is the main one. Okay, conference appear, well, will be uh, in forms of the proceedings. And they are reviewed within a specific time frame. Well, you will receive the result, either reject and uh, 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 accept. Quite unlikely, well, you'll be invited to re well, resubmit and review, review again. Normally, well, you were just given the, the comment from the reviewer. We just take it for granted, the assumption that you will follow it and change accordingly. But really, most of the time, the technical program committee, well, they may not re check, well, check your, your, your resubmission. And this is where one of the problems comes in. Well, as I said, I'm speaking from the technical program committee, is uh, integrity committee is concerned. Well, we find that sometimes we find that well, there's so much error. Then we go back to the organizer. Then the organizer come back with they were shocked. Say, oh, we have told them, but they never change it. Then to us, well, it is not the responsibility. Well, for well, actually, you to go for all those things. It's really the re responsibility of a technical program committee. You have to recheck. Well, the submission is well. It's up to, you, up to you to decide, well, really, they follow uh, the comments or not. Normally, the conferences, they have a limitation on the length uh, of the paper and the format. And well, up to this point, well, before the COVID-19 models, we take it for granted. The conferences, most of them will be face-to-face, -face, although there have been some online in the past. But now, more or less, well, a lot of them now change to online now. It's a quite interesting development because on one hand, we see that some of the conferences even open the, uh, the registration free. So suddenly you see an explosion of the number of registration uh, able to come in and attend the talk. Although when people have to uh, publish a paper, then more than likely they still need to pay. But then again, well, the pay is going to be less because obviously there's no cost involved in terms of the venue, the catering, all those things. So we are not too sure that is it going to attract more papers or not. So it might be good if you can able to attract more papers. Well, we expect the acceptance rate to be down. And it also means it's going to be more work on the organizer. Anyway, coming back to this. So another good reason for going to conference because of the networking plan. You don't just go to conference because publish a paper, well, there's a tender buffet and then walk off. Really, that is the opportunity. You should really get to know other researchers. And also you can listen to the uh, some uh, supposed to be well leading leaders and experts. Well, maybe they organize a, a, a panel and more importantly, some kind of keynote speaker. So those are the things you need to make this decision when you uh, judge and evaluate uh, a conference. And you could be also public, you might have to publish in a journal as well. And, but the thing is, yeah, the cost involved, well, not only registration, but also in terms of the travel cost and accommodation cost. Journals, well, journals, they are periodical publications. And then, well, mainly they, do, they have some specific discipline of every interest. And most of these, they are peer reviewed. And then they're supposed to be credible because well, they are there all the time. And that's why well, we have those uh, uh, journals and transactions are being indexed. And also we have our partners index. Like in IEEE, we have other partners, well, uh, indexing organization, they index our papers. Publication, they go for a few rounds of a meticulous well, peer review process. They, they really go down very detailed well, on, the edit, uh, on the editorial requirements. And sometimes it be quite tight schedule as well. Sometimes they also have some special issues. It could be on a, on a certain uh, transaction, but then again, they nail down another the theme or topic. Then they invite some special issues. So they focus on some uh, uh, question on topics. They may be free to publish, 
or will be pub uh, publicly and free required. It. Now, there's another development going on now for the open access. So, but even IGBE, we are also uh, now opening up uh, two venues as well, where some the journals and transactions allow the looking into the open access. Traditionally, in IGBE, uh, our, our, our financial model is based on uh, the download, so that people have to pay for it unless you have a subscription, uh, uh, society members, etc. But on the other hand, well, the open access, well, we allow anyone to download. So the only thing is to shift the cost well, to the author now. Because in the old system, well, IEEE is uh, uh, recovering well, the cost involved uh, from the download fee, or maybe from the university or library, they pay for the uh, overall library, uh, subscription of the whole library of IEEE Explore. But now well, there's, there's a demand well, on a lot of these they're saying that well, this information should be made public. So from the author point of view, Obviously, having open access appear to be much better because you see more people can read it, you get more citation. But then again, well, you may need well costs upfront. But on the other hand, well, from the society point of view, maybe they still feel that okay, put the publication behind the paywall, then we can ensure that our asset. So I'm not judging and, and commenting well which one is better, but really it's up to individual. But having said that, the open access and also open well a lot of opportunities that some people try to make money. And then they're really the low quality, they fake, they even don't even publish it. So you've got to be extremely careful on those open access journals. We come back to the conference. So what are you well, looking at? Of course, the first thing is a conference should be relevant to your work so that well, your material is going to be uh, acceptable to them. Well, is it difficult? Now, obviously, well, you'll be two sides of a coin. On one hand, you want it to be difficult so that well, you maintain the, the reputation and the, the prestigious. Because you will see later on from Australian ex experience, well, we do rank for the conferences, and that would be one of the uh, one of the criteria. But on the other hand, if the conference acceptance rate is really low, that means it may be difficult to get in. So really, you, you need to take into account. Of course, the indexing is another main purpose of what people want to publish in the journal, uh, in the conference. And also, what do you expect to get well, from just publishing a paper? As I mentioned, it's a networking opportunity, the key no speakers, well, uh, who are the organizers? Of course, it might have a little bit fringe benefit. You may take a look at the opportunity. You travel overseas, a little bit sightseeing. Of course, it's not happening now. Well, we're everything going on virtual now, so unfortunately, okay? So, but on the other there are also other fringe benefits. I also look at it. You would have maybe tutorials or workshops, poster section, industrial section, uh, social visit, et cetera. Those are the things you may want to take into account. And also, I mentioned about the location and the cost of the travel. Now, actually, well, we have a conference and the journal's well, policy. Now, because the reason I bring it up is having a conference paper, you do have the opportunity to convert it into journal so that you can have well, two birds and one stone. But the answer is not as straightforward. I just put the conference paper in the journal. It is not allowed. It. You have to understand what is uh, well allowable, not uh, what is not uh, allowable. Conference paper cannot be republished without substantial addition technical material. The meaning of substantial is left to the discretion of the edit editor. And there is no quantitative threshold. So whether the new technical material is substantial. So you must be able to put in additional materials, additional results, diagram. In general, the number of pages for journals should be higher than the content anyway. So and also during the submission uh, process, we should also specify it well. Uh. What are the differences? It could be in the manuscript central field requesting the information, or maybe in the paper itself. So for a conference, for a paper of eight pages or more, maybe you require some kind of, of uh, summary to explain what are the differences. So in a way, it's also good because we're really having two papers. Well, text and figures can be exactly the same, okay? So because they're simply using the same text uh, and the figures, right, they're not really a double publishing, but then, but then again, uh, it's, it's advisable, at least you have a different uh, title so that it's recognizable as two different papers. It's possible to submit a journal at, at the same time, but you cannot submit the conference after the journal has been uh, published. And also it's a responsibility to ensure the copyright commitment made outside the IGBE because sometimes the conference well, may uh, have the copyright because you see it's not an IGBE conference. Now we come to another part. Okay, I'm going to, I know that I'm, I, I'm not too sure the exact time, but I know that um, we've got two hours, so I, I hope I'll take a little bit more at this time. Let me share a little bit about the Australian experience. 
Then you may ask a question, okay, with all these things, then what are we, well, how, how are we in Australia are dealing with this problem? I'm talking about from the computer science and IT discipline. Well, we do have one organization called um, CORE, uh, which I'll talk about that later on. And another one is from the Australian Research Council, where how they measure with the um, uh, ERA and also engagement and impact. So let's take a look at CORE. CORE stands for Computing Research and Education Association of Australasia. It is an organization made up of all the head of school uh, um, of the uh, of the Australia University in the School of IT and uh, Computer Science, and they have uh, this is the term of reference. Uh, we try to make sure advanced um, uh, on the computer science field and also the cooperation and all those things. But more importantly, they have come up with uh, some documents for the conference ranking. Now, I'm not saying that this ranking is an absolute um, uh, golden rule. Okay, let's put it this way. Because I personally, I, I, I know that some of this could be quite subjective, especially people, well, question in terms uh, of a decision um, uh, entirely due to the uh, member within the panel. And then well, people may doubt, well, will there be any reason because well, some panel members will favor a certain content. I'm, I'm not commenting any of those, but just people spend.
examine the conference you want to attend carefully. So we look at two main things, a scope and quality. Although we are now in the process of trying to expand it further, we try to quantify some kind of the metric well, for the conferences itself. So we look at a number of uh, attributes. So looking at the technical program, we're looking at um, how many reviewers, how many papers. If you tell me I have a conference whereby the reviewers, each one is reviewing 50 papers, I can tell you something is wrong somewhere. If I have a conference telling me that, well, they are separate so many uh, papers, that each paper only have six minutes for presentation. I'm not talking about poster. I'm talking about full presentation, only six minutes, something is wrong. If you tell me, well, you have a conference whereby you submit it and then you have the um, you have the uh, result within a week, then I think something is wrong. Then really, are you able to review so many papers in such a short time? And then we take a look at the composition of your reviewers inside your technical program committee. If you have a technical program committee entirely from the same organization, maybe like a university, which hosts the, host the conference, and then majority of the papers will be within, from that university, Again, well, we consider something is wrong somewhere. So those are the things we, we look into. So ultimately, we, have, we can make a decision that we can make the decision, a hard decision. I can tell you even, well, during my time for so long, actually, we don't really fail a lot. A lot of time, well, we, we give the chance to the organizer. We send it back to them. Say, I said, look here, well, some of the papers, well, really, the quality is not up to scratch. And, and also, we have to, if you remove it, then we may, we may reconsider it. But having said that, the two main Major, major thing we're looking to do, machine generated papers, plagiarism, those are the things. Plagiarism nowadays is not that bad, well, quotation. The reason behind it is well, you've got tools to check it. Machine generated are also able to pick up some of the, um, uh, some of the, uh, the indicators, okay? Uh, I think the, the tools are used to get a bit better. But nevertheless, if we have, well, conference, we receive some kind of, um, complain and also we export it ourselves, then we will mark the, the conference very badly. Well, you may come to the decision, uh, well, you resubmit re it or maybe even reject it. So you can find out all this problem and question Q&A on this uh, technical program integrity initiative. Now, I'm not going for all these questions. They are all available in IEEE. You just simply search IEEE, well, conference, well, publishing, well, TPII, FAQ, and it's explained, well, really, what, what, what do we do? We, as I said, we don't take this lightly, but then again, it happens because well, there are so many conferences well, going on, and then we really need to maintain the integrity well, of our papers. So if it is really a worst case, then we have to uh, tell the organizers, well, unfortunately, but well, this is standard the language, we just tell them that uh, we, in order to ensure the uh, quality, that uh, we are not able to accept the journal. What could be the... Um, and then, well, then we will release the copyright and then they can take the paper to other, other places. Well, it's not a problem anymore. But what could be the worst scenario? Now, sometimes we receive some kind of appeal or complaint that, oh, uh, we see some other bad papers and all of this. Our reaction is, if you think that it's not really up to scratch, tell us, okay, we can even take the step to retract the paper. And I'm not too sure, have you ever come across this or not? You may go to explore. And then find out this paper has this notice on it. Now, this paper has already been published. The proceeding has been accepted. Now, we will not go back to the whole step to reject the whole conference because well, by then it will be all done. But if we find out individual papers, well, they're not really up to scratch, we will retract them. It's happening. Actually, I'm in, on another committee. We are going through around 500 papers or so. And some of them may be, well, we may even have to, unfortunately, we've got to retract it. Having the retraction is another process. It, it's quite different. But nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is, well, the submission is not only just simply writing. You need to take a look carefully where you submit. Well, what is the quality of it? Now, I have finished all, okay? So I just try to summarize what I've been talking so far. First of all, you have to recognize, well, writing and publishing is really part of your academic and as a researcher, okay? You cannot get away from it. Well... You are expected from the management, the leader perform, and also part of your training and your own career development. You really need to plan. Uh, I have given you some ideas, some of the plans about the research plan, publication plan, networking plan, management plan, all these things. You need to really utilize, well, the opportunity and limited resources. Don't try to do everything. You can't. Okay? You have to make use of resources you have. And the conference, extra, I always say conference is a good venue to start well, your academic career. Or those, well, we see um, university now come to the point that, well, as I have said, well, 
Sometimes uh, they do not uh, support you go to university uh, conferences. I even heard some university they do not even allow the staff go to conferences. The reason behind it is uh, when you go back to the Australian assessment based on ERA and the impact, etc. So having a lot of papers may not be a good thing. They may consider it as well. Know that you have a lot of papers, but you don't have enough impact. So that is a two sign of of of, of the um, of the spectrum. When I first started my career, Australian government will give us this thing called the research training scheme. They will recognize our work on the paper we publish, the student will graduate, and then we share a pool of money. So at that time, the university encouraged us to do that. So that's why you look at it. Well, maybe if people consider I have too many publications. I agree. I, I did. That, that was the, well, what happened at that time. But now suddenly they go to another aspect now. They want to have quality paper. They want a paper that will be doing an impact. They want to be you know, able to bring in money. So that's why you need to be uh, much more uh, careful with the strategy and where you publish. That's why it's important well, to select the most appropriate venue to dis disseminate your information. But nevertheless, I know that the publish or perish, well, is uh, something on the mind. I know that you look at a very negative way. Unfortunately, it's going on not only in this, in Australia, in all other parts of the world. But I would encourage you to think from another angle. Think about you have faith and believe in yourself. Well, you do your thing, you believe it's right, you need to do it. You consider it as a publish and prosper. Because well, your, your good publication will give you a good track record. You're able to network people, recognize you, well, you build yourself a name. Well, then uh, you'll be able to carry on, but not only just in publication, maybe you get a grant and all those things. You can be a leader in a particular field you're, well, you're in. So I hope that you have the mentality Think about publish and prosper. Don't think about publish or perish. Okay, thank you very much. And I, may I wish you luck with your research and publication. Now, can I pass the time back to uh, the organizers? Uh, sorry that I took you a little longer than I, I expected. I hope you're not getting too hungry. Okay, you can take away the screen so I can take a look at the chat box as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, can you uh, take back the uh, the screen so that I, I don't share my screen and then so that I can see the chat box. I hope to see anybody asking questions from the chat. All right, sure. Yep, I can see okay. it now. Okay, thank you, Prof. Lance, for the wonderful and excellent presentation just now. So we are opening the floor for Q&A. You may raise your hand to ask any questions related i suggest i suggest if possible you can type in your question on the chat so that i can read the the chat straight away because right. well uh there are uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't come too clearly well okay. on the audio yeah okay uh you may type the the question in the chat box yeah that's right so normally what i do is when i read the question in the chat box i just read it out to everyone and try to answer it as much as i can okay yeah, mainly most of you are giving some compliment and thank you very much. How can we join IEEE? Yes, easy. Come on. You guys have had IEEE section. Okay. This is um, Sumanta Kuma. Okay. So, welcome. I hope you just can talk to someone within your section. Then you can join. Uh, what else? How could we publish paper in high impact factor? Well, we submit it. Okay, the first step is you must submit it. And then, well, of course, we'll see how good is your, your paper. Then, of course, well, there's no guarantee, I put it this way. Especially if you talk about high impact factor, well, I assume you know what's impact factor. Impact factor is a calculation based on how many papers the, the journal or transaction has published and how many of these papers have been cited. Although it's not really a, a true indicator of the quality itself, but really just simply refer, because people can play around with citation. So if you ask me, answer your, your first question, how could we publish paper in high impact factor? Submit it, submit to them, all right? Next one, um, while writing a paper, what are the key points we need to concentrate on? Okay, good question. Now, just like doing anything, there's no single point. You have to cover everything. Then of course, I would say the first thing is, well, you think about what you want to um, uh, to to publish. In other words, what is the main thing? I would assume that uh, you have done some work, you have some result. So I would say that you have to think along the, the way, you have to, the title. The first point is about the title, you need to be really concisely explain what it is. And then you are able to write the abstract. Now, the reason that you're doing this is, when people look at your paper, a lot of time, 
they look at the title during the search, is it relevant what they're looking at? And then they read the, the abstract. It's only one, one, one paragraph. Then, well, you think it's really relevant, then they go further down. And the other thing is, the first few lines is important. The reason behind it is, well, this is what appears on the search engine. So, you know, so and also another one is the keywords. So if you ask me, well, when you concentrate, these are the few things you start on, but you need to make the whole thing to be presentable. Otherwise, you won't even get it accepted. English is important. English is very important. Because, well, if you are, uh, if you have a few well, grammatical mistake and a typo, you make the review very annoying because uh, he or she does not have the confidence in your work anymore. So those are the things. Formatting is important. The content, okay, follow whatever rules well, you, you have. It's most annoying that well, people do not follow the, the formatting requirement. The fonts are out, uh, they're too big, too small, and then the, uh, the diagrams are not clear. Those are the things you need to take into account. Okay, what else? Do you suggest any research planning apps, um, something like an MS project? No, I don't. Maybe you can help me to develop it. We can sell it, okay? Well, uh, Samelia, oh, okay, good idea. We should do an app and try to sell it, okay? <laughs> Just do a normal planning, we do. Uh, what else? Um, how do we choose appropriate journals to publish our work? Okay, first of all, I assume that you have to read enough journal. And then, because another thing you have to take into account is when you submit a journal, you must make sure reference to the papers in that journal. Of course, uh, one thing is because of the citation reason. And the reason is because, well, if a reviewer well, of the journal looking at your papers, yeah, you don't say anything about, well, the papers in my journal, then how do I know that you are in my same field? So you have to really take a look at what are the journals you have been reading, uh, relevant to your work, and publish in there. Is it possible to publish paper with only one research question? Yes, research question, it all depends well, how you write it. You could have one research question, how do I go to the moon? So that one will be really linked up to the whole thing. Okay, if I want to go to the moon, I'll do the rocket, I'll, do, I'll have to design the, the, um, the, the space suit. Okay, Elon Musk did an excellent work. Uh, he's able to do a commercial rocket, uh, land somebody in space. What else? COVID-19 has changed a lot of ways of living. We avoid physical contact as much as possible. How do we marry this with physical data collection? As a matter of fact, this one is a, is a, is a, is a valid question. Actually, I'll, well, I didn't share that article. There's one article sharing that, well, this COVID-19 thing is, well, uh, in a way that our next generation of scientists actually is a very much disadvantaged. Disadvantage, you know, first, first of all, is financially. Because a lot of universities are having a financial problem now. Even in Australia, we are talking about well, they are afraid of maybe losing, well, uh, um, I think 21,000 jobs. I think 21,000, yeah, that's right. Because of one university, Deakin, I uh, heard recently, they're going to share 400, uh, 400 jobs. And then even there were rumor, one university, they're saying even in financial difficulty as well. So first of all, you have the financial support is reducing. And then one is because of the lack of contact that the people cannot do the data collection. It's valid, actually. But then again, hopefully, it's not going to be there forever changing. Even our university, the students are even locked out of the lab. So if you imagine some of those people doing the um, experiment on the um, on the species, on the culture, and all those things, animals, well, they're not able to go in. Okay, what else? Next question. I want to pursue research on mathematics. How to write the paper with more university attract, sir? I want to research in abroad. Okay. Well, I'm not really from mathematics. Well, again, mathematics well, depends on well, what field you're in. Are you in pure mathematics or are you in applied mathematics? Because, well, uh, I just read another uh, comment on some Facebook where one of my good friends uh, talking about uh, saying, oh, why not we engage our well, engineers to teach engineering maths because a lot of mathematicians are not able to teach it. But to me, it's not true because well, you, I, my comment is, well, you can have good math teacher uh, teaching a good engineering math. And on that hand, you have well, bad and engineer teaching uh, bad engineering maths. So it all depends on what is your field of interest. Mathematics is so broad, okay? It all depends on what you're doing. Uh, question from, okay, Radifa Ahmed, YouTube. Does actually have a mentor uh, program considering experts to help and guide members? Well, generally for producing manuscript, we can be several. Yes, we do have a, we do have the uh, mentors, uh, mentor scheme. Okay, but I'm not too sure is the mental scheme uh, including things like uh, writing a paper and all those things. But one thing I would suggest is, you, if you are a beginner, a lot of time you may do the joint publication with someone. As a matter of fact, if you're a student, then the first thing you will publish with your, with your lecturer, well, uh, with your supervisor. 
then the supervisor will be the one helping you. Okay, actually, I'm not too sure we are very extensive, but we do have a mentor scheme. My suggestion is, well, you have to join the local OU uh, organizational unit, then you see that well, how you're going to map up the people and then talk to them. You have a joint publication and they can help you out. What else? Should we first publish in conference on journal? Answer is up to you. Okay. But of course, I would say that well, having conference is easier in a sense that because you got timeline. Because of having conference, well, they say that, okay, I'm going to have this conference in the 2021st uh, January. That means you must publish by then. But journal, you might have an open ended. So if you are in this, in, if you are studying, then, well, you may have a problem with your, with your, with your uh, papers being accepted before your submission. So I would strongly suggest my, my normal practice, I would always advise my students going to conference and then will convert in the journal. But it's okay if you have your work su substantial enough. I have some students entirely published in journal. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sometimes the idea that could be published doesn't necessarily be useful to actually grants, which is crucial for supporting the whole research. Any advice on that? Well, really, I agree with you. Well, not necessarily all the publications are related to grants. Grant is only just, well, publication is only as a track record. You're able to do some work. Well, it's not, it's not the same. So there are two different things altogether. Okay. So it's, 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 um, which is crucial for supporting the whole research project. Well, you, you also need to have experience in running, uh, running um, uh, the grants or project before. So having the paper is one, but you have past record in running the grant. So you'll be, um, uh, useful. Okay, what is a review time taken actually for publishing a paper? Depends, depends. So th that's why I again come back to the question about conference and journal. Conference because you have much more clear deadline. They tell you deadline for submission. They tell you notification, maybe plus and minus. They may extend a little bit on the submission time. Well, but they might have, but because they have a hard deadline on their conference um, running it, so you will know it. But journal, you could be as you have seen, I've, I've seen sometimes how it may take years well, for paper being published. So this is the thing you have to think into account. Uh, I'm asking what is the difference between conference publication and conference pre precedence the publication, which is better? Uh, I'm not too sure about the situation about the uh, conference uh, precedence publication. I know that there is then another scenario right now about the publication proceedings uh, before the conference so that people can review it. But I think from RGB point of view, we are only exploring it. So I cannot answer hard and fast um, different. So what it means is sometimes, or some conference, they allow the proceedings to be circulated before the actual running the conference. Okay, but it's not too widely uh, practiced at this moment. Time. We are looking at it from the committee point of view. You mentioned it depends a lot on choosing the correct supervisor. How can one know beforehand about the supervisor? Now, in terms of the supervisor's background and expertise, you can always tell from the paper they publish. And then in terms of the, um, the supervisory style, it's a bit difficult sometimes. So I think the best person is from other students who is supervised by him or her. A lot of time, well, if you ask my personal experience, I would have more confidence, well, if I have some student well, recommended to me by someone, so that we can have a better understanding beforehand. If you really do not know, in a way that I have to admit that sometimes you're taking a chance as well. We do not know. But I can assure you, majority of the supervisors are reasonable. Okay. Um, sometimes you only have some personality problems that between I've seen it before. So that's why sometimes we have to do the um, um, uh, mediation in between and try to solve the problem. In the worst case, sometimes we may even have to change the supervisor. Or maybe the student will look for another supervisor. So it's very hard to say. I mean, just like, well, in life, how do you know you marry the right person? Okay, well, it happens. Okay, sometimes you have to take a certain amount of risk, but you have to uh, try your best. In preparing the lecture notes, uh, how far can we use, well, others' publication with that seeming plagiar uh, plagiarism? Or when we acknowledge the source in the reference section? Ah, okay, good question. Now, this one is really go back to the, uh, the practice of the plagiarism. Again, IEEE, we have the uh, different levels of, of plagiarism. I'm not going through all this in there. I cannot well, tell you over uh, uh, on top of my head. But uh, when you run through the tools, the tools that give you a certain percentage, then you have to look into carefully what is the level of the uh, plagiarism. You can paraphrase it. But then again, well, if you copy it word for word without referencing, then of course, first of all, there's a no-no. Okay, that is an outright plagiarism. If you reference it, if you 
well, word for word, but then again, you make a quotation mark and also just a certain amount of people know exactly that you copy and paste from there, that'd be quite all right. But you cannot copy the whole section as if, as if it is your work. So this is the, the general rule you're looking at, okay? So I would say that, well, of course, while putting in reference is essential. You must have, this is the source of information. But then again, how are you gonna represent it? This is the thing you need to learn, okay? Either you paraphrase it, or maybe you just put in quotation mark, only a limited amount you can use, okay? What is the IGOA transaction and how is it different from conference and journal? Okay. Now, the way I have already mentioned earlier on that in terms of length, there was one slide earlier on where we have some definition on the journals and the transaction. Now, in general, from a student point of view, when you publish a paper, there's really no difference. It's only just another line on your CV. But then again, well, there are subtle differences in terms of the review process or between the journal. with the help of my super professor but i want to create a paper without the help of my professor how can i sir now the question is it all depends your paper how much is from your supervisor you must bear in mind that well if you are working on an entirely different topic your supervisor have no input at all then that's fair enough but if you tell me you're doing a phd work if you get the ideas from your supervisor you publish two papers with him or her. Then you use the same material, publish another paper without your supervisor. Then I'm saying that you're creating a very tense relationship with your supervisor. To me, that well, I will be offended. I mean, if you ask me, of, of course, I, I don't mind too much about it. I mean, I come to the point that I don't need an, another extra paper. But well, I'm assuming that if your supervisor thinking that, well, it is her idea or his idea, I've been coaching you along, and then you do some work, know that the work is yours. But then again, well, his or her idea will have, a, have an input and also especially for the early two papers. Then I would say that you better well, be careful. Okay, this is my suggestion to you. Okay. So start a new topic. That's fine. Go for it. Okay. How could we know as a good journal? What are the main features of a good journal? Okay, this is some of the things I've already mentioned. Well, in the case of, um, um, uh, of, of uh, core, 
they look at factors, things like impact factor is one of the things people always look into. Okay, and then well, they look into uh, in terms of the uh, rejection rate and uh, who is going to run it. Those are the common factors. But as I said, well, you have uh, some ranking and listing outside. We'll take a look at those information. How much time is spent in review of paper as for IEEE? Okay, well, it depends on the individual. Well, when you say the, how much time in review, I'm assuming that you may be asking how long before you can get it back. Now, you must bear in mind, all the academics doing all these review works are volunteer. They don't receive any money at all. Their review work is not well where they bring in their, their paycheck. They're only doing it because they have interest in their discipline. They want to contribute well, to, the, uh, to the knowledge. So don't expect you just submit it today. You expect them to give it back to you. They have no obligation to do it. Sometimes being a, an editor, sometimes it's a hard job so that I can have to look for people to review the paper. And then well, it takes some time to review. I cannot chase them too long because otherwise they get fed up. They don't want to do it. So my suggestion is when you look at the journal papers, a lot of time on the lower left-hand side, the journal paper will normally tell you when was the first submission, when was the second review, second review, and then they publish it. Then you have some idea, indication, how long was the overall process as well. Okay, it's very hard to say for a single answer. Okay, any other question? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Any police? Okay, one more. I have to write a Q1 paper as requested from my supervisor. So does it take a long time to get the reply as in the final stage of my research? Yes. Give you a Q1 paper. Everyone want to work Q1. Why, why yours is uh, want to be in priority? Unless you, you, you know the, ed the editor want to give you some uh, preferences, unless you review. Q1 is being Q1 because everyone want to be there, right? So in the case, wait, sorry. <laughs> but then again, having said that, well, sometimes it's acceptable. When you submit your, your, your uh, uh, thesis, you can put it in there. The paper has been accepted. Uh, sorry, I've been submitted. Sometimes the paper has been accepted and then not yet submitted, uh, not yet published. That's the one, okay? We still count it. Okay, so any more? I think people are getting hungry. I'm, I'm spending, well, one hour, 45 minutes already. Can I pass it back to you guys? Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. Prof. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so thank you for much, very much for the correct valuable session, and we will uh, close our session today. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for participating, and thank you very much, Prof, for giving us such a wonderful lecture on writing papers, research papers, and submissions. Hope everyone will have a beautiful dinner or anywhere you are. Have some food to eat, and thank you very much for uh, coming for today's session. We will adjourn this uh, session. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, and I hope that uh, I'm available. So, if you want to talk on other topics, uh, we can look into that as well. And as I said, I'm looking at some of my good friends on the list. Uh, Professor Bohan uh, is uh, on the list as well, and say hello to you, and uh, some other people, whoever I know. Okay, keep well, keep safe, and I hope I believe the MCO is, is uh, relaxing now over your side. And um, we hope the worst is going to be over soon. Okay? Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.